In this video, I am showing you two simple examples of using Newton's second law. So the first example is there is an object. It's uh, in blue here in the middle of the screen. A 10 kilogram object is pushed across a horizontal table against friction. So in this case, I've got the mass, that's 10 kilograms. I've got a pushing force, which is 50 Newtons strong, directed towards the right. And I have, um, this word is meant to be friction. There is a friction force of 10 Newtons in the opposite direction to the push force, right, towards the left. So there are two questions. The first question is, what is the net force on the object? So the net force is this thing called F net. Um, sometimes it's written as the sum of the forces, either one of these. But the net force is a combination of 50 newtons and 10 newtons, right? So 50 newtons and 10 newtons are working, in this case, against each other. Some of it's to the right, some of it's to the left. Actually, the stronger force, the 50 newton force, is towards the right, and the weaker force is towards the left. And so the net force is equal to 50 to the right plus 10 to the left is 40 newtons towards the right. I hope you can see that that's the answer. It's not 60 newtons, right? The forces, they do add, but they are adding in opposite directions. So overall, there's a subtraction. And because the rightward force is the bigger force, the net force ends up towards the right. So that is how to calculate the net force. You're given some individual forces. In this case, it was a push and some friction. And you had to figure out how to combine them into the net force acting on the 10, the 10 kilogram object. Newton's second law is about the acceleration and its relationship to the net force on an object and the mass of the object. So what is the acceleration of the object? The acceleration is the net force acting on the object divided by the mass of the object. So the previous question gave us the answer to the net force. The net force is 40 newtons towards the right. And the mass of the object is 10 kilograms. So I'll divide by 10 kilograms. So the answer here, 40 divided by 10 is 4. A newton per kilogram is acceleration units, meters per second squared. And don't forget that the direction is towards the right. So the acceleration of our 10 kilogram object is four meters per second squared towards the right. And this is a, a very, very simple application of Newton's second law. You had to figure out in this problem the net force on the object, and then using the net force, you could use Newton's second law to determine the acceleration. Um, one of the steps that was interesting was that the Newton per kilogram is equal to the meter per second squared. And another interesting thing is that we kept the direction the acceleration is always going to be in the same direction as the net force. 
the acceleration is not necessarily in the same direction as any of the particular forces. For example, the acceleration is towards the right, and it is against the friction force which was to the left. Okay, so here's another problem, the second example problem. In this case, there is a person that is being accelerated upwards in an elevator at five meters per second squared. The person's mass is 50 kilograms. The question is, is how strong is the support force on the person? So first of all, let's remember that the support force is a force that's acting by the floor. And that's a force that's going to be pushing upwards on the person, the support force. So the person, if I just draw the person small here, and then in orange, there's a support force on the person and that's upwards, but at the same time, you know that this is, you know, at, in an elevator here on Earth, there is also a weight force on the person, right? The person has a weight. There's some information given in the problem. You know that the acceleration is upwards at five meters per second squared. So let me put that down here. The acceleration is five meters per second squared up. And we know that the mass of the person is 50 kilograms. Because we know the mass of the person is 50 kilograms, we know that the weight of the person is 500 newtons. And the weight is a force, which is a vector, and it points down. So that means this weight force vector here is 500 newtons, and I've already indicated that it's downwards with the arrow. The question is, is what is the support force on the person? So the next step, it's a little bit hard to see exactly what to do next, but I'm gonna show you what you can get if you remember that the net force is equal to the support force, which is going to be upwards, and then plus the weight force, which is this downwards force here. So let's get the net force from Newton's second law. The net force is equal to the mass of the person multiplied by the acceleration of the person. So the mass of the person is 50 kilograms. And the acceleration of the person is 5 meters per second squared up. So 50 times 5 is 250. And kilograms times meters per second squared, what we're calculating is a force. Force units are newtons. And the direction is up. It just comes from the direction of the acceleration. So the net force is 250 newtons up. So we know that the net force has this value, but the net force is comprised of a support force, which we want to know the value of, and a weight force, which we actually already know the value of. So the support force plus the weight force, which is 500 newtons down, is supposed to be equal to this net force, 250 newtons up. And so the only answer for the support force that makes sense is we have this support force plus this downwards force is ultimately this upwards force, which means that the support force, can you see that this answer is what works? 750 newtons up plus 500 newtons down 
is 250 newtons up. So the support force is 750 newtons. What's interesting about this is that the support force is bigger than the weight force. And the interesting fact, or the interesting thing about this in particular is this support force here is also known as the apparent weight. If you've ever gotten in an elevator and gone up in the elevator, at the start of your journey, when you are accelerating upwards, right, what you find is that if you just pay attention to how you feel, you apparently feel like you weigh heavy, right? You feel kind of pressed down into the floor a little bit harder than how heavy you are usually, right? So apparently you've got a larger weight while you're being accelerated upwards. And the sort of converse of that is when you get to your destination floor up in the building, you slow down. Your acceleration is actually downwards. And in that case, the support force is smaller than your weight so that your net force is downwards so you can have an acceleration downwards. And your apparent weight is lighter than your um, weight force. Right, so you feel lighter, right? So your feelings of weight are actually based on uh, how hard a floor is pushing on you.